Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Thanks for joining me today. So today I have a very old-fashioned do and don't video for you and I'm going to be approaching fur in pastels. I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it and then on the right, the right way to do it. And of course there's no wrong or right in art, but this can be applied purely to photorealism. So if you do photorealism and you're struggling with fur, maybe this video will help you to approach fur in easy steps. And I'm also going to show you the mistakes I made and how not to do it. So let's get started right away. Materials can be found in the description. And let's start with the don't version right away. So we have the don't on the left. I am working monochrome in grayscale. I'm not working from a reference photo. So this is a very general way to approach fur. On the left, I'm now getting started with the base layer with gray and I'm using way too much pressure. Coloring the whole area in with just one base layer of gray. It's a medium toned gray, but it's not that dark and I'm coloring the whole area in and then pushing the color in with my finger. So I'm blending it in right away using too much pressure. So that is the first don't, is using too much pressure when you start and too much pressure when you blend. Also, I'm not worrying about the direction of the strokes, just coloring the whole area in with one gray. So then we have to draw some hairs because we're drawing fur. So I'm picking my white and I'm drawing the hairs on top of the base layer of gray. It's good to work with base layers, but here I only have one base layer of gray and then I'm going to draw the individual hairs on top. Not worrying about the direction of the hairs, I'm just drawing them straight down with lots of pressure as well which right away is the second don't. So the first one was doing a base layer with too much pressure. The second one is drawing the individual hairs straight on top without building up any layers and any value, just drawing the hair straight down. So this looks a bit streaky, so let's blend it in. So I'm blending in all my hairs, making everything a bit smoother. But you can see that right away there's no value anymore, there's no shadow, there's no highlights, and I got rid of all my details. So let's try bringing some of the details back with the white again. So you're noticing that I've only used two different pencils, a gray and a white. I haven't worried at all about the animal that I'm drawing and the movement of the hair and the movement of the, the bones and the skull or um, the, the muscles that you have to draw around, this is just looking flat and there's no realism to it. So this is not a good way to approach drawing fur. You have to build up the layers more. So the most important mistakes here on the left is using too much pressure right away, not starting with a dark enough base layer and then finishing with white right away without having those values in between. So right now on the right, we're getting started with the way I currently approach fur. So this is still not based on any reference photo. It's also still grayscale. So it's very general and the colors you use depend on the reference photo you use. So that's too personal. But these are steps you can use anytime you're drawing fur in pastels. So let's start with the first step. So right away, I like to get started with a darker tone that I eventually want the fur to be. Even when it's white fur, I start off relatively dark. So this is a darker base tone than I did on the left side. It's a medium toned gray. And you can also see that I'm drawing around the curve of the ball, so I want a 3D looking animal, a 3D looking subject. So you have to follow the skull and the muscles and really look at the direction of the hair. So for my base layer, I right away look at the shape. Also, I use light pressure 
This way there's still enough tooth on the paper left to do all these layers on top on. And of course there's also darker parts, parts that are in shadow. So I figured that the bottom half was going to be in shadow. So for the bottom half I'm using an even darker base layer. So that's a darker gray there. But I continue following the right shape of the ball. You will also notice that the right ball it will take way longer than the left. It's also good to take your time. Still with a light base layer, drawing all around and then blend that color upwards. So when I do any animal, I make sure to use the right base tones, the darker base tones for the shadow parts and then blend all the base layers together. First with the pencils and then maybe with some, uh, some blending with my fingers, but not too much. Alright, and then to blend the colors together more, I go back to the first pencil and go over that transition to smooth it out. And I go over the ball once again with light pressure to fill up any gaps where the paper is showing through too much. So I want the whole area to have a nice solid base layer without it looking too heavy. Then I take my finger and very carefully go over, still blend in the direction of the fur and the curve. And then we have a nice base to build the fur on top. So now I'm getting started with the actual color that I used for the base layer on the left. And I'm now using this color to start mapping out the strands of hair. So I don't go in and draw individual hairs Yet, I save that for last. First, I map out the different strands of hair, especially if you're drawing relatively long hair. This is like medium to long hair. Mapping out the strands of fur on top of the base layer, still with light pressure. I'm clumping the hairs together. And I leave open small spaces in between the strands so you can still see the base layer through. So even in white fur, we want enough contrast in the fur. We want to see the base tone and there and then those hairs sticking out, coming forward. It's all about the contrast. The colors you use don't really matter even. So it's all about the contrast. It's really nice to practice this if you have gray scale pencils. Just practice this and it will help a lot when working from reference photos as well. So I'm going all over the ball, following the curve of the ball, which is now my animal. Make some hair stick out, make it look nice and flowy. Also, the strands of hair are crossing each other, so I want enough variety in the different strands. And then what I like to do is tap a bit. So tap in the colors, make everything blend together a little bit without fading out all the details. So this is not finished, but you can already see that this right ball has so much more curve and depth to it than the left one. Then I like to go back in with my dark base layer and go in between the strands of hair, especially the parts that are in shadow. So the bottom half of the ball, go in between the strands and hype up that contrast a bit more. So at this point the paper is still not saturated. And this will give a lot more depth to the fur. This could be wool fur, like very, very wild looking fur, like um, polar bear fur. And then also doing some of the dark at the top, but not too much. Focusing the darks on the parts that are in shadow. Now we can start building up towards the lights. So always work from dark to light. Start off with the darker base tone and then build up the strands towards the lightest color. So now we're going in with a light gray. Still no white. So, and then what I like to do is bring out the strands of fur a little more. So I'm going to use 
the base of the strands that I put in with the slightly darker gray. Look at those and use this light gray to bring out the individual hairs within the strands more. Still I want variety, so I make sure that no line, no hair is the same. And I still use light pressure as well. So the heavier your pressure is right from the start, the more difficult it becomes to get this effect and work realistically because the paper will be saturated so quickly that you don't have any space left to do your highlights or your contrast. And I'm focusing my lights basically on the top half. So the darks in the bottom half and more light in the top half. Alright, so you can see the fur appear now. It starts to look like fur. You can see them just looking where I want the light to hit, making sure that the tips of the strands are nicely lit up. And then it's time for the almost final step is using white. So I like to save white for last for the very brightest highlights. Make sure it's nice and sharp. And now I'm really going to do the individual hairs. Lightening up the top of the ball, especially the very tips of the strands that are going up and hit by light. And with this white you can do some nice flyaway hairs, hairs going over towards another strand. So with this you can really create a, a nice um, realistic and soft effect to the hair. And going all over. You can vary with the pressure. But I'm still not using harsh pressure in here. The pressure is a little bit heavier at the top where I want the white hairs to really stand out and then at the bottom I'm not using much pressure at all. Okay, and then it's time for the very final step. I'm going in with some black just on the bottom half of the ball and go in between the strands of hair a little bit more to Put in more contrast. I would never start with a black base layer for any fur, but just putting in a tad of black creates more depth within the strands. And whether you use any black, it depends on the color of the fur you're drawing. Right now I'm just working monochrome, so black is the darkest color that I can use. You can also go in with dark blue or dark brown. And that is basically it. So still relatively quickly, but I did take my time. So that's very important. If you want to create photorealistic drawings, taking your time and having lots of patience is the most important thing. Then building up from dark to light, starting with quite a dark base layer but not using too much pressure and then you can start building up towards the lightest strands and hairs. So that concludes this video for today. I hope you found it helpful. So in my drawing club membership over on my website I have tons of tutorials about drawing animals in colored pencil and pastels which go way more into the details and into using colors so if you're interested in joining the drawing club membership have a link have a look at the link in the description and then i hope you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments what you think of it and then i will see you in the next one